Me, 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 me. This is my best Macho Man Randy Savage take. Today we're talking about the 302 through 400 plus cubic inch small block Chevy. Oh yeah, this small block Chevy with so many parts that'll take a dump on your brain, small block Chevy. Yeah, this small block Chevy, the OG small block Chevy that deserves respect. YouTubers, welcome back. Tyler here. And for you today, we are talking about the old school small block Chevy. I'm talking about the people's freaking champ, small block Chevy. In my last video, I talked about the LT1 and how it was a little bit different and how the heads would not work on your typical small block Chevy because a lot of people just don't know that. One second. Now, I was being purposely vague in that last video about what's the difference between the small block Chevy and LT1. But I've made it painfully clear in past videos that this indeed is a small block Chevy. Well, duh. But I'd have to question if you even know the difference. If I say this is an LT1 and you have to say it's a small block Chevy, that you even know what the difference is between an LT1 and a small block Chevy. Because if you knew the difference, I wouldn't have to spell it out for you. My channel is a free DIY performance oriented YouTube channel that I go over stuff that's not just stock car parts. If you don't like my free content, there's the door. It's an L21, a Gen 2 small block Chevy. It is a small block and it is a Chevy. I, you got me. It's a small block Chevy. Is a Gen 3 a small block? Is it a Chevy? Oh, got me again. It's a small block Chevy. But if you go up to that LS guy, he pops the hood and you say, that there is a small block Chevy. You might also go to a Cowboys fan and say, you like the Redskins. Not gonna work out too well. You know what, that's pretty much how it went in my mind. If you were at LS Fest and you said that to a group of LS guys, that might actually happen. But anyways, we are not talking about the LS motor. We're talking about the 1962 to 2002 small block Chevy. The 302 cubic inch to 400 plus cubic inch small block Chevy that can take the same head on a 302 and you can put that head on a 400 cubic inch motor and it would work. And why is that important? because it made it very easy for the aftermarket industry to make a wide variety of cams, intakes, cylinder heads that worked across a common platform. Are you listening? Damn. You know, I was sitting here making notes and I was planning on giving you guys the history of the 4 inch bore small block Chevy. But you know what? I was going over the displacements and rules for limited displacement classes, why Chevy did this, and I was looking at the time, and I was like, you know what? That really doesn't matter right now. The only thing that matters for you right now and us, car guys, is that they made a lot of small block Chevys. And that is very important because the same thing that went on back then is the same thing that's going on now with the LS motor. Because guys go to the junkyard, they would yank them out, they would hot rod them up, and they would go to the drag strip. And that's what's really important about the small block Chevy is it really started a fundamental shift in hot rodding and just the culture of cars that we have today. And so really, you can think of the small block Chevy as the father of the LS. I am the father. That's impossible! Search your feelings, you know it to be true. No! Alright, for this next part, I'm going to go with three different engine combinations for a small black Chevy. And for some of you, it's going to be common knowledge. For some of you, you might learn something from it. So the first bill is going to be what I call the mullet special. So let me uh, get the hat on. 
real quick. And the, the mullet special is gonna be definitely the budget build for your small box Chevy. Gonna be a typical 350. The second one's gonna be a little more displacement, 383. And then the third one's gonna be an all out race motor for your grudge guy who doesn't care if you have a Coyote, a LS, or anything, he's going to race you. So the first one, it's just gonna be your typical 1996 through 2000 truck motor, a Vortec motor. You can still find these in a the junkyard, I know, cause I got my buddies to the junkyard, we pull out some LS's, and I've still seen these motors out there. So uh, your basic 350, it's just a OE roller motor, and it's gonna have a, a 3.48 stroke, it's gonna have a 5.7 rod and a four inch bore, and it's gonna have about 9.5 compression, and it's gonna have a decent set of cylinder heads on there, which are gonna be the Vortex cylinder heads. So the first thing I think you wanna do, if you find this motor, you yank it out and you put it into a car, you're gonna to wanna to put headers on it. And depending on your car, what you have, you gotta get different headers for that. So you need, and what I would do, I would do one and three fourth headers. I know that might seem just a little big for a Vortec motor and 350, but if you want to upgrade in the future, you can have bigger headers so you don't have to buy headers again. And the next thing you want to do is we're going to get an intake for that. I know some of y'all want to do fuel injection or whatever, you know, but really it's super cheap to go carburetor. And the intake we're going to get is a Speedmaster mid rise intake. Cheap intake, and it's a 1500 to 6500 RPM range. Then, after that, what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna get a carburetor for it. Now, the fuel system, depending on your car, that's gonna be a lot of variables, but the carburetor, we'll get a Brawler 750. Really, a 650 for this motor will probably be a little bit better and like drivability and everything else. But if you get a 750 and you want to go a little bit bigger in the future, then you have something you have some growability with. So the 750 Brawler, I think, is a good one with a double pump or a carburetor. And next about that, we're going to get the uh, the Comp Beehive Springs. And the exact spring I would get with, for that head is going to be a 26915. It's a pretty good spring, gives you a wide range and more lift if you want to do that. And you're also going to have to put screw in studs in this head. I would not trust the pressing studs. Make sure you get screw in studs, put the three eighths in there. It just alleviate a lot of problems. And if you can go ahead and afford it, get guide plates, get roller rockers. But since this is a budget build, we're gonna use the stamped crafting ones that come with those Vortec heads. And you're gonna have to cut the guides down. Now you can get a tool for about 90 bucks. You can do it yourself right there on the floor if you feel comfortable enough with that. If not, you're gonna take a machine shop, it's gonna cost you a lot more money, but you can do it. I do not put the $90 in this budget if you're going to price all this out because that is a tool that you can do work on other motors if you want to. So after that, here's the cam. It is the XR282 HR cam. It's a 510 on the intake. A 520 in the exhaust, and that's called a 1 5 rocker ratio. 230, 236 duration on a 110 lope separation. Now, with that combination in a, you're probably gonna get around 375 horsepower. You might get a little more, but 375 horsepower is probably pretty safe with all those on there. If you take the motor apart, rebuild it, and oh, and also you're probably gonna wanna put new lifters in there too, because you don't know how many miles have been on there, but that's up to you. You can might get away with the same lifters if you're feeling froggy. Go ahead and leap. And finally, after that, if you wanna make more power, 125 shot of nitrous on that motor. If you get the rings, you can go a little more. You won't pull up the ring lands. And that'll probably give you around 500 horsepower on a motor that's really cheap. That if you feel comfortable with, and you can probably build that if you're knowledgeable enough, you know, I can do that you know, with my buddies, and I'm sure you probably can with your buddies, and it's a very cheap, inexpensive build. And I'm calling that motor the Mullet Special. All right, so you're bored of the mullet, you wanna go faster in a and put a little more nitrous on top. Not more nitrous, but a little nitrous on top of this setup. So what are we gonna do first? First, we're going to ditch the 350 rotating assembly. You're going to sell your Vortec heads, but we're going to keep the carburetor, we're going to keep the intake, and we're going to keep the headers. That's right, we thought ahead, so now we're saving money. So what are we gonna do with our block now? We're gonna take a SCAT 383 rotating assembly, which is 11 one compression, and we're gonna put that into our Vortec block, and the part number on that rotating assembly is going to be a 1-92302. That's gonna be a 3.75 stroke, 5.7 rod, and a one-piece rear main seal. A little fun fact, I know a lot of you guys probably think how you get a 383 from a 350, you take a 400 crank and just drop it into a 350, and you have a 383. That is not the case because a 400 block is a 2.65 main journal and the 350 block is a 
five main journals. So what do you have to do? You have to first grind the crank down to a 2.45 main journal, and it is a two-piece rear main seal crank from that block. So you're gonna have to convert your Vortec block, which is that one-piece rear main seal, over to a two-piece rear main seal, and then by the time you have it all done, you have lost money. It's gonna cost more time and headaches than just buying a non-production 383 rotating assembly. So after that, we have ourselves at 383, and then what are we gonna do next? Got some notes here, a lot to go over. Aha, yes, we're going to get to NKB 200cc intake motor heads and a 64cc combustion chamber. Now that head has a dual bolt pattern. So it's a Vortec bolt pattern and it's a traditional 350 bolt pattern. So if you want to upgrade your intake in the future, but we want to keep our Vortec um, intake that's bolted up like that. So we're gonna throw that right on there and save some money. Now a good thing about the NKB heads is that Skip White over there, if you wanna change the springs up, get yourself some guide plates, which we're gonna do, get yourself some 716 screw and studs, which we're also going to do, you can have them set it all up for your setup and not just buy some head that is a package deal that you cannot change and you're stuck with certain parameters of your lift. So that's why we're gonna get those NKB heads from Skip White. So what else? We're gonna get a magic stick. We're gonna get the XR 294HR cam. That is a comp cans hydraulic roller camshaft. And the lift is gonna be a 540 on the intake, 562 on the exhaust, duration at 50, gonna be 242, 248 on a 110 loop separation. I have had this cam, great cam, 3500 stall. The moment you stomp on it, it'll make power all the way to 6500 RPM. So we're gonna need a little better valve train, right? Up at the top. So we're gonna get the Comp Gold 1.5 rockers. Do not get cheap rockers. I did that and they broke. So learn from my mistakes, get something right the first time so you don't have to buy it again. That will actually save you more money in the future. You're gonna need some chrome oil. Push rods for that. You know, there's a lot of other variables in here that you might need to worry about, but this is just the basics. Then you're gonna throw a 100 shot on top of that and that motor will easily make about 450 to 490 horsepower. Throw a 100 shot on there, you'll be almost near 600 horsepower and you can hurt some people's feelings with that motor. And that is The Enthusiast. Bang, bang. All right, so our next motor is gonna be the ultimate freaking small block Chevy. I mean, this is gonna be your business tycoon, your professional racer, or your drug dealer. That's the only people who are gonna have a motor like this, because you're just gonna take your average small block Chevy and you're just gonna take it into the dumpster because this one will crap all over it. Now, I wouldn't even call this a, a small block Chevy either. I know some of you guys are probably like, ooh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess him up or not. No, I'm gonna call this one the BDP. If you don't know your acronyms, that is the big play of mother So, for our BDP motor, our first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put some 18 through nine degree cylinder heads on there. Now your stock cylinder head is a 23 degree valve angle. And if you don't know what valve angles are, here's some pictures. All it does is just change the valve angle so the air has a straighter chance of going right into the cylinder and they always raise the ports a whole bunch so there's less turns when the air going into the motor. Now this is high dollar stuff and they're always gonna have shaft rockers on there, have their own special intake. Another thing, just to put this in like, you know, perspective of how good these heads really are, if you take one of the best production small box heavy cylinder heads, which is gonna be the AFR 245, they flow at, let's see here, I got some notes right here. At 800 lift, those heads flow 345 CFM. And that is a shaft rocker head, 23 degree valve angle. But now let's talk about the badass race cylinder heads. Those heads have been known to make over 400 CFM. That's right, over 400 CFM. We're talking big block type flow on a small block motor. If y'all didn't know about that, you must be living in a rock. 
So let's go to the next one. Now, the intakes, they are also a special intake made for those cylinder heads because the heads and the runners are raised so much that you're not going to get a regular intake on that head. Just not going to happen because this is big boy stuff right here. Now, also to accommodate that, you're going to have to put special pistons in that motor because of the valve angle has changed. Not only that, but you're also going to get a different block. You're not going to use some stock factory block or a Dart SHP. You're going to use probably a Dart block that's aluminum that costs six thousand dollars if you really want to be a big boy they're gonna have a raised cam and probably gonna be on a 50 millimeter core and they're gonna probably have a big bad boy four inch stroke in that thing and i have seen you know people with dynos online talking about these motors and they're also gonna be well over 750 lift in the cam on um, those motors have been known to make anywhere from like 800 to a thousand horsepower in a that's right, that is big time horsepower NA. So if you throw a turbo or a blower on there, you're making excess of 2,000 horsepower. And that is your BDP small block Chevy. Well, that's pretty much it. We've reached the end of this video. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. And my next video, I'm gonna try some more welding on some exhaust with a cheap flux core welder. So if you guys wanna hate on me some more or talk shit about me, that video will be out probably in a couple of weeks or next week. So until then, keep hating, because it's a motivation, motivation, motivation for me. And you other guys, keep wrenching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.